Hey everyone, so this week we are going to begin our exploration into the elements of art. This is going to get us set up to be able to build some vocabulary in art class so that we can start to think about the different components that go into making art. Um, and this will better prepare us for making our own art in the future. So we're going to start with line this week and we're going to do some kind of self, um, self-paced, self well, I guess self-paced isn't the right word. <laughs> You're going to be taking notes out of your textbook. So I'm not just like talking at you for a couple, you know, for an hour. Um, this will get you kind of used to using our textbook. It'll also um, help you kind of um, in, think about all of this because you're going to have to take notes and you're going to have to know these key vocabulary words. Um, we will most likely have a short quiz over the elements after we go through them. So it's super, super very important that you take good notes and that you feel like you have a good grasp and understanding on how to define these terms. Um, I know it seems really simple, like a line is a line, <laughs> but there's actually a lot that we can talk about with line. Um, I'll show you in our textbook in a minute. There are quite a few vocabulary words that you'll need to know and that you'll, you will not only need to know how to define, but you'll need to know how to apply. So you'll need to know how to use these words to create art. Um, let me see. I'm going to show you a couple things on our Google Classroom. So this is the first time we're using our textbook. Textbook is right here. You'll just click on that. I have mine open in a new tab. We're going to be on chapter two for a little bit, the elements of art. Um, if you are on using, if you haven't downloaded this and you're using it, you're just kind of opening it in a browser. Um, it'll show up as page 84 right here, but on the actual textbook, it's page 67. So if you're trying to find unit two, that's where it's at. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of this to you. You need to take your own notes, but I'm going to kind of go through it. If you have your art journal, that's the manila folder that we designed the cover on, um, we will soon bind those together if we haven't but if you i think i think our class did that last time <laughs> but if you haven't done it yet don't worry about it um you can take notes in a notebook you can take them on google drive wherever works for you you're just going to need to take some good notes today so make sure you are writing this information down somewhere okay so i'm just going to show you the chapter and kind of how you need to go about reading it um so yes, you do need to read. I read all of this. The most important thing that you write down as far as notes go are any line, any words that are bolded like this. So you see right here we have an introduction to our vocabulary. Any chapter that we read in the future, you should always look for this because this is going to tell you what you're looking for. These words are what we are going to be quizzed over. And you can find them in the text. Um, for example, we have line right here. Line is an element of art that is a pa the path of a moving point through space. Bam, definition. There you go. So, um, see, we got another one dimension. So you will need to go through, read all of this, and write those definitions down. Make sure you have a good understanding of how to talk about line and how to use line. Um, these images are really helpful. I don't know. I always like looking at pictures and textbooks better than I do reading, so I hope. Um, these kind of reinforce some of these ideas for you. This page is really important. It talks about the different types of lines, line variation. And I'm scrolling because I want to show you one thing that you got to get, can't miss, is line and value. So we will go in depth about value a little later, but um, the thing that I want you to understand here is that you can create line, you can create value with line. Um, Artists will use cross hatching, which I know that this picture is a little bit blurry, but basically, um, let me see if I can write on it. An artist would do a technique where they would kind of draw like this. So they would take all these lines and that creates a shadow. C 
cross hatching is just like that. So if I'm making a three dimensional letter, like, what am I doing? I'm just doing the letter O. Um, I chose a bad one to do because this is a curve. So if I'm trying to make this three dimensional, okay, hang on, I'm going to start over. That's really bad. It looks like a toilet paper roll. Okay, if I'm trying to make, let's do the letter A. So I'm drawing the letter A. And it's a flat letter, but I want to make it three-dimensional, and I want to shade it. All right, so I have this, but I don't have any value here yet, right? It's just kind of a designed letter. So I could do cross-hatching right here. You see how I'm adding value to the side? That's a very rudimentary example, but this is kind of what they're trying to point out in this image, is that the artist who created this portrait used cross-hatching to make all of these shadows. If you have any questions about that, um, please email me. Um, but there's, um, after you do all, I want you to read all of this and take your notes. But if you go to unit two line, our assignment, whoops, our assignment's right there. But if you scroll down, I've also posted this video. If you're having a little bit of trouble grasping what some of these definitions mean, um, the artist in this video, I think I chose to upload this for you all because I think that she does a great job of explaining what line is. And it's also, it's a pretty cool video to watch. Um, I don't know. I like watching videos, so I thought all of you might enjoy that. There's a little bird in it. Um, but she, she does go through cross-hatching and shows some really good examples. So if you have any questions about any of these, I think this video can reinforce some of the ideas in our textbook. But our quiz is going to come out of our textbook, so you can't just watch the video. You need to make sure you're reading the textbook. Okay, so after you've done all that, after you've taken your notes, you're pretty good on the definition of line and the rest of those definitions you will need to come here to unit 2 line to our assignment this is the first assignment I've uploaded our rubric to um, we're gonna start using this rubric for everything we create if you did not watch the syllabus video this is gone over in the syllabus video um, so I would go back and watch that so that you understand how you're being graded for any work that you make. But if you click on that rubric, then you will have all the definitions right here and all the potential points you could get. Okay. So I've written all the instructions here, but I kind of wanted to give you a visual example of what you need to do. Um, we're going to be using just a blank sheet of paper um, or your sketchbook if you've already gotten that from class. If you haven't gotten your supplies from class, it's totally okay. Just use a blank piece of paper. Um, construction paper is okay. Computer paper is okay. Whatever you have. And you're going to need a pen or a Sharpie, pencil, and colored pencils. So in your sketchbook, on your blank piece of paper, you're going to create a poster for line and value, and value in the context of how we're talking um, about line. So you can utilize like cross-hatching as one of your definitions. Um, and I kind of made an example, it's kind of silly, but these can be silly. Um, I used candy as my theme. Um, we talked about creativity a couple days ago, and you need to be creative with this, come up with some kind of visual theme. Um, so I chose candy as my kind of illustration component to this. Um, you can use the whole sheet of sketchbook paper. I just kind of drew in a little poster here so I could write these words outside of it. But you will need to create a poster that's kind of like advertising line and value. Or if you showed this to someone in class or someone from another class that didn't know what line and value meant, they could look at your poster and they could learn what line and value mean um, from the poster. So 
my theme was candy and I drew some candy bars and some different things around here. Um, I was thinking about the candy I always have at my grandma's house. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else always has that, but my grandma's always got that strawberry candy. Um, but anyways, so my poster works because I'm using line to draw visual examples, right? We've got line, many, many uses of line here. I've got a zigzag line, I've got tiny lines, curvy lines. Um, I'm also using line to create value. So just kind of like I drew on that poster or the, the textbook, um, I've created value with my lines, with my colored pencils and with my Sharpie here. And you can see I've done a little bit of cross hatching right here and on the sucker and I've got some value right there. Um, so those are two ways that I'm using line in this poster. You need to use, um, different types of lines in your poster and then I just would like for you to write one or two or three just a few definitions from your textbook so my first definition is line what is a line and I would write the definition of line right there and then I would choose another keyword from the book and write the definition right there so maybe maybe I would choose cross hatching oh no I lost my spot Maybe if I wanted to use cross hatching as my other definition, um, I could write cross hatching and I would write the technique for using cross lines for shading. So then I could point right here because I have used cross lines for shading. So this should be pretty simple. Um, it's not a huge final assignment. It's just gonna kind of get us going on learning how to define and apply line. Um, just make sure that your poster, although it's in your sketchbook or it's just on a piece of computer paper, um, you need to be thinking about it. It needs to be well thought out. It needs to be original. It needs to be creative. Um, make sure you are following our five C's in this project and make something that looks like you spent time on it. This should take probably like more than half an hour for you to complete. So yeah, I want you all to do well on this. So please let me know if you have questions and I will answer them as quickly as possible. If you have any trouble with the textbook or anything, send me a message and I will see what we can do. Um, but I hope this makes sense and I think it's a fun project. So <laughs> I hope you have fun with it. Okay, well, I will talk to you all next class and I hope that you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching the video.